Getting your seedlings started early indoors over winter is one of the most exciting times in gardening. Combining the acts of planning, planting, and growing into one amazing adventure before the true gardening season even starts. We do it to get an advantage, an early head start on the season, but also to extend that growing window for those long summer crops, like my cucumbers here. However, those advantages quickly evaporate if we don't follow the order of things and time this endeavor properly. Hi, I'm Jeff from the Ripe Tomato Farms, and today we're transplanting our seedlings. When to do it, how to do it, and key things to look out for. Let's continue this abundance of seeding success and set ourselves up to transfer that to our spring gardens. When we start our seeds early indoors, we take this sort of organized control over these specific crops. Much more so than direct seeded plants sown out in the garden, like say beets or carrots. Every aspect of temperature, moisture, airflow, and eventually light, carefully constructed to maximize our space and time. But, just as we've divided our crops into the ones that are direct seeded outdoors, versus the ones started early indoors, the ones started early indoors are divided yet again. Not all seedlings get transplanted before going out in the garden. That's right, I'll say it again, not all seedlings get transplanted. Not all of our indoor crops are going to follow the same set of procedures. In fact, started in large enough pots right away, you can get away with not transplanting any of your plants, even the ones that we traditionally do. If you're just doing a few plants early, or you have unlimited soil and space, this is no problem. In that case, your only concern is to time the germination and subsequent growth properly, followed by a hardening off schedule for outdoor planting. Now, if you've never heard the term hardening off before, or you've never attempted to harden off a group of young plants, don't stress. Check out this video right here, it explains it all nicely. On top of that, there's also certain plant groups that just don't transplant very well. Namely your melons, cantaloupes, watermelons and honeydew, and heck, even cucumbers sometimes. Yes, these guys are started early indoors, but usually in larger pots to limit their replantings to just the once when they go out in the garden. But for all other plants, we're going to be transplanting them from the plugs to the larger pots at least once. And that's going to be our focus today. Moving our young seedlings into larger digs is entirely dependent on time. Now, before you go get all excited, no, there isn't some sort of regimented schedule in the terms of days or weeks that we can transplant. Rather, it's actually dictated by the plants themselves. Most of our seeds are going to sprout within a week, give or take. And when they do, they spring up with two funny shaped leaves known as cotyledons, or seed leaves. At this point, the young plants barely have a shooter root system, so we need to leave them to grow a little bit more. Very soon though, usually within another week or so, our young seedlings are going to develop their first true leaves, and they come right out of the center of the shoot. Amazing! And you can now see the young plant starting to take shape. In terms of transplanting though, it's still too early. So again, we leave them to grow. By now, it feels like the seedlings have slowed right down. And with everything happening so fast up to this point, well, we're getting a little impatient, and that's understandable. In fact, it's the opposite. The seedlings have not slowed down, not at all. Sure, the shoots may have stalled, but the action below the soil has completely ramped up. After the plants get that first set of true leaves, what they do next is, is they put all their energy down into the root systems. And this is good. This is what we want because it's that developing root network, that root system, that's going to dictate our transplanting success. Even still though, we have a bit longer to wait. 10 to 14 days after those first true leaves appear, about a month or so after we first planted the seeds, a second set of true leaves are going to spring up. And it's this second set of adult foliage that tells us it's time to transplant. Now, if you planted in large enough pots, there's no rush. 
It's not like the young plants are going to die if we delay a couple of days or even a couple of weeks. But if you remember back to our seeding soil video, you'll remember that the medium we used to germinate our seeds was quite low nutritionally. So the clock is ticking and these plants are going to need some food. Yes, we could go ahead and liquid fertilize them right now, but the best way to keep their growth momentum going is to move them on. So let's get planting. Whenever I transplant a young plant to a larger space, I always make it a rule that the new pot needs to be at least three times the volume as the old one. Otherwise, what's the point? The plant is going to outgrow the new pot way too quickly. Throughout the world, the industry standard for companies that produce seedlings and plug trays, like the ones we're using here today, is to move them on into what's known as 4-inch nursery pots. These guys come in round or square, and they're basically three times the volume of a plug, bang on the nose. Now, the easiest way to move on a large number of plugs is to prepare our pots first, and that means we need to choose the soil. Any commercial potting or container soil that you can buy at the store should be fine. One $5 bag does dozens of pots comfortably, so buy accordingly. Conversely, if you're doing a lot of seedlings and you want to save some money, you can make your own. It's not that hard. One recipe for a quick and easy mix is just 50% coconut fiber and 50% compost. Add in a splash of perlite for aeration and an equal amount of vermiculite for moisture retention and you're good to go. In the world of potting mixes, there's a million different aggregates that we could add to boost the soil, but today we're just going to keep it simple. Okay, taking your pots of choice, fill them up to the top with your preferred potting mix, leveling them off as you go along, and then compressing them down slightly. This mix starts out quite airy. It's very fluffy, and it can sink over time, especially when it gets moist. I find that compressing it down a little bit can help with this. Now, for our transplanting to have any success, we need to minimize the shock of moving that bare plug into the new soil. And the two biggest shocks are the change in temperature and the lack of moisture. So, if your soil's coming in from outside, let it acclimatize indoors for a few hours to bring that temperature up. As well, let's pre-soak it ahead of time to eliminate any chance of those roots drying out. This step is key and it cannot be overstated. Let the soil soak up as much moisture as it can hold and then drain off the excess. No plants ever want to stand in water, but doing it this way ensures a perfect transition when we're transplanting these guys. After about two hours, the soil has soaked up all the water, so let's go ahead and make some holes. Make the holes a bit wider than the plugs themselves, but not too big. This way, the planting is going to be a cinch. As for depth, well, that's going to depend on what plants you're working with. Crops such as tomatoes, peppers, and even zucchinis all put out adventitious stem roots, so the deeper, the better. Others, like lettuces and kales, well, you're going to want to observe the existing root color and then match that depth in the new pots. Once you get that depth figured out, you can assembly line style all your plugs and plant away. It's quite satisfying, and you can bang out 100 pots per hour, no problem. Now, if you haven't already, the temperatures need to be decreased from where they were at germination you know, to around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. As well, the new transplants are going to need light. Lots of light as much as you can give them. Under these conditions, you shouldn't need to water for at least a couple of weeks. Light, decent airflow, and eventually your typical feeding schedule are your top priorities. Finally, you can breathe easy. Just like the successful but frenetic seeding of about a month or so ago, the successful transplanting is now behind us. Pretty straightforward stuff while you're doing it, but I agree, that was a lot of info. So, while it's still fresh, 
Let's go ahead and recap the main points. Starting our plants early indoors before the spring is as timeless as gardening itself. Under these idyllic conditions, our seedlings grow fast, sometimes too fast. For those growing but a few plants, they can afford to use larger pots and avoid any transitions until the final garden planting. That's great. Same for those plants that are poor transplanters. But for those using plug trays, growing dozens or even hundreds of new seedlings each winter, well, you'll be moving them on mid-cycle to a larger home. We call this action transplanting and it's necessary for the seedlings to keep that growth trajectory positive and moving forward. To do it right, aim for new pots that move up in size at least three times the total volume to make the endeavor worthwhile. Use a regular potting mix that's light, airy, and drains well. Once you've gathered everything you need, you're going to start to think about transplanting right away. But we need to wait for the right time. Beginning with the second set of true leaves, anywhere from a month to even eight weeks after seeding, move your seedlings on to a pre-moistened soil. Plant them deep for your long stem crops such as tomatoes and peppers, or at the existing root color for things like lettuces and brassicas. Once your seedlings are moved on and planted, light, cooler temperatures, air motion, and the proper feeding schedule become the priority. You can now breathe easy though, as this transition has afforded you another month of respite until true spring hits. Starting our plants early is a luxury, for sure. But for some crops, it does become a necessity if we really want to be successful with them. Hopefully today we've gone through all the transplanting steps in such a way that you can transfer your seeding success over to gardening success. Hey, best of luck this year guys, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.